Now we are going to use coordinates of a point on the uh, terminal side of an angle to write the values of the trigonometric functions of an angle theta. So for instance in this example you can see we are going to find the uh, values of sine, cosine, tangent, you know, and all, all the other three trigonometric functions of uh, this angle. And what we know, we know the coordinates of a point on the terminal side are what? Four and three. So what does that mean is this, that uh, if you look at this, then this side is, this is the y coordinate, that is three, and this is the x coordinate here. Uh, just to stress it, I can make it a little thicker, okay? So, and this is the value of the x coordinate. So we have three and four, and then the diagonal will be what? By Pythagorean theorem, we will have uh, four square plus three square. If we add them together, the square root of this, which is the square root of 25, and that is five, will be the value of the diagonal. So according to this, our uh, sine, pardon my handwriting, our sine theta would be what? That is opposite over the hypotenuse, so opposite is three, so it's three over five, cosine is adjacent over the hypotenuse, so cosine of theta will be four over five, and tangent would be three over four, and so tangent theta is three over four, right? Opposite over adjacent, and we can write the reciprocals the same way. So now let's see how would we write the coordinates, uh, I'm sorry, the sine and cosine and the other four trig functions or trigonometric functions of any angle in the plane, okay? So in general, uh, let's say that we know here is an angle theta and a point on the terminal side has coordinates in the generic terms, uh, x and y, so what we can notice is uh, this, that uh, this uh, segment here is how much? That is uh, y, right? Okay, and uh, then we have uh, this uh, segment here, which would uh, serve as uh, the adjacent side as x and by Pythagorean theorem, the uh, diagonal is going to be the positive square root of or the non-negative square root of x squared plus y squared, which is r in this case. So what will happen now? If we want to write sine theta, then that will be who? The opposite, opposite side over the hypotenuse, that is, so if we would like to write sine of theta, then that will be opposite over the hypotenuse, that is uh, sine will be y over r, and of course in this case we have, we are assuming that we are not at the origin, okay, and cosine would be adjacent over the hypotenuse, right? So that's x over r, and the tangent would be opposite over the adjacent. And of course, we have to assume that we are not along the y-axis, right? And for the cotangent, you have the reciprocal, okay? So here, we have to have the denominator not equal to zero. So, and then for secant and cosecant, uh, we can just take the reciprocal of these. Okay, so let's take up some examples to understand it further. 
So now say our angle theta is such that uh, a point on the terminal side is uh, negative five two. What that means is that, uh, that means that x equals how much? Negative five and y equals two, which will mean that r is negative five square plus two is square, which will be the square root of, or the positive square root of 29. So if we have to write uh, the values of sine, cosine, and tangent, and uh, the other trig functions, what we will do is that we will just follow that definition that we just had. So the definition was uh, that uh, we had uh, sine theta equals how much? Uh, y over r, right? Okay, so in here sine theta would be who then? It will simply be 2 over square root of 29, right? And our cosine theta was x over r. Now x in this case is negative 5, so that would be a negative 5 over square root of 29, okay? And uh, we can write our tangent the same way, that's y over x, so y is 2, x is uh, negative 5, so positive over negative, the sign would be finally what? Negative 2 over 5, okay? And the same way for the other functions, say I have to write, say, cosecant theta, okay? Then the cosecant theta is going to be what? The reciprocal of the sine, which is the square root of 29 over 2, right? Okay, so that's how we shall complete this calculation. So let's look at this calculation where we want to find the trigonometric functions of an angle whose terminal side is on the line y equals 2x in the third quadrant. So what we have here is, so you know these are the coordinate axes and this is the line y equals 2x. So third quadrant will mean what? We are looking at which angle? this angle right here, so our angle is this angle in this case. So what we can do is that we can go ahead and find just coordinates of any point on this line, you know, that are in the third quadrant and use those and the definition that we just developed to write the values of those functions. So, so what we can do to find coordinates of a point here is that we can take any value of x that will produce a point in the third quadrant, so that will be a negative value. So how about we took say x, x equals negative 1, then y is 2x, so y would simply be negative 2, right? So our r will be square root of x square plus square root of y square, which will be square root of 1 plus 4, and that will be square root of 5. All right, so if we are writing all the values, then let's just go back to definition. The cosine of theta is x over r, and uh, x is how much in this case? negative 1, so that will be negative 1 over square root of 5, right? And then the sign is how much? The sign is uh, y over r, okay? So sign is going to be y coordinate is negative 2, negative 2 over square root of 5, right? And uh, the tangent and cotangent would be what? Just going the same way. Tangent would be negative 
2 is my y value, negative 1 is my x value, and this would become what? A positive 2, right? And cotangent would be the reciprocal of this, that is 1 over 2. So that's, and then cosecant would be negative square root of 5 over 2, and secant is negative square root of 5, all right? So that's how we shall complete calculations like these, okay?